There's a new GPU in town and it launches today. Well, it's probably a paper launch, just like all the other GPUs that have launched in the last six months, but whatever, we're gonna talk about it anyway. Before that, this video is brought to you by the ASRock X570 PG Velocita. With full support for the latest Ryzen processors, the board features a 14 power phase design with DigiPower and Dr. Moss for reliable power delivery. Enjoy PCIe Gen 4 performance with current gen graphics cards and the fastest NVMe SSDs on the market, along with killer Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and more. For more info on the ASRock X570 PG Velocita, click on the link in the description below. Man, this box looks huge from this angle on camera. It's really not that big of a box. It's really not that big of a GPU. It's the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA, and there's no Founders Edition version of this card. They're just going straight to the Add and Board partners. Let's actually see which one they sent us. So MSRP for this guy is 329 US dollars. <laughs> Highly doubt that you'll actually be able to buy it for that price or that you'll be able to buy it at all, really. I'm sure some of you lucky few will get your hands on it, but for most of us, it's probably gonna be the same situation as all the other GPUs where you're just gonna have to fight tooth and nail to try to get one of these things. It's gonna be super scarce, scarce supply. Oh, we got EVGA, nice. This is an XC, ho oh, ho ho ho, XC Black. I'm pretty sure the specs on this are pretty close to reference. Like there's no factory overclock. So that means it boosts to roughly 1.78 gigahertz. And this is actually using a new GPU. It's the GA106 versus the GA104 GPU that was found in the RTX 3070. And a cut down version of that was used for the RTX 3060, uh, 3060 Ti. So this is a new silicon. So you guys might be like, well, if it's a new GPU, maybe there will be more supply, but you also have to consider the crazy GDDR6 memory shortage that we're currently seeing. So that could easily limit the supply of this GPU as well. Sorry, I don't have better news to share with you guys. Ah, ah. There we go. Oh yeah, I forgot EVGA likes to plaster their cards with tons of plastic wrap. Give me a sec. All right, so here's our card. Looks pretty similar to a lot of EVGA cards that have come out recently. Do a quick measurement here. This isn't super scientific, but gives you a rough idea of how long this card is. Just under eight inches. So around 200 millimeters or so of length. Should fit in the majority of cases out there. And it's got a dual fan design. Semi-open shroud, so it's gonna be ejecting a lot of hot air inside of your case. Bear that in mind. We've got a single eight pin power connector on the end of the card there. Nice big GeForce RTX branding along with EVGA. Looks like we've probably got, I don't know, four to six copper heat pipes in here. Kind of hard to say from, from the outside. But uh, on the back we have one HDMI 2.1. So that's capable of 4K at 120 Hertz. And due to the high bandwidth of the protocol, we can now do HDR at that resolution and frame rate, which is pretty cool. We also have three DisplayPort 1.4a ports. Even though the GA106 is a new GPU, you still get the full suite of NVIDIA technologies like G-Sync, ray tracing, DLSS, NVIDIA Reflex, NVIDIA Broadcast, pretty much all the technologies that you'll find on higher end Ampere GPUs, you'll find on this card too. Now the memory specs on this card are kind of interesting because we actually get a 12 gig frame buffer, which is 50% larger of a frame buffer than the more expensive RTX 3060 Ti. So eight gig frame buffer, 12 gig frame buffer. However, the RTX 3060 Ti has a wider bus interface at 256 bit, whereas this is only 192 bit, meaning the 3060 Ti still has more effective memory bandwidth at its disposal. It also has roughly 35% more CUDA cores than the 3060. So yeah, this is gonna be the faster card. Obviously it's why it's a bit more expensive. I really don't know what else to say about this card right now. Let's, let's play with it. All right, I've gone ahead and popped the GPU inside of one of my personal streaming rigs here at the office, which has a Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core processor that's running stock. Uh, it does have PBO enabled, so um, AMD is just running its automated boost algorithm. And it's got a pretty nice 240 millimeter AIO on there, so um, it shouldn't run into too many thermal limits here. Um, we also have 32 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 3200 speed. And I forget the exact motherboard. It's like an Asus ROG Strix, you know, X570 board. As you can see, we've got Unigen Heaven 4.0 here just to put a full load on the GPU, nearly at 100% utilization right there. And I've also got MSI Afterburner, which I've used to dial in just a really quick and dirty overclock I spent four or five minutes just uh, just playing around with the settings really quick. So obviously you could squeeze a bit more performance out of this and uh, you know if you spent more time with it, but this is just just a really quick um, OC to, to get us started here. So I maxed out the power and limit, uh, power and temp limit sliders and I dialed in a core clock offset of 200 megahertz and a memory clock offset of 700 megahertz, which takes us to a boost clock on the GPU of 2070 megahertz. 
Um, pretty nice bump actually, roughly a 16% bump over the stock uh, GPU boost of what, 1777 megahertz, I think is what it ships at. So that's pretty nice. Obviously this isn't gonna scale linearly with performance. Don't expect a 16% bump in frame rates as well. Um, you're looking at maybe three to 5% depending on the game. Your mileage may vary, but it's kind of nice to see us almost hitting 2.1 gigahertz on uh, this GPU. Memory clock is at just over 8,200 megahertz. That's up from 75 megahertz at stock. And you can see our GPU temperature is hovering anywhere between 69 and 70 degrees Celsius. It is pretty chilly in here right now. It's about 18 C, uh, which is what, 64? Yeah, about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know why it's so cold in here. I think the heater's broken. Uh, my hands are freezing. But um, yeah, it, it seems to be staying pretty cool. Obviously, if you're in a warmer environment, this is gonna heat up beyond 70 C pretty easily. And I should mention that it is inside of the P400 A case from Fantex with the side panel on, you know, everything's pretty normal. So it's kind of uh, uh, being installed and running inside of a normal real world scenario. It's not on a test bed, open air case or anything like that. It's quiet, it's fairly quiet. I mean, you can hear the fans. I don't have headphones on, obviously. I would if I was gaming, but uh, under full load right now, it's at 76% fan speed on both of the fans. You can hear the GPU fans. The system's about three or four feet away from me and the whole top panel is pretty much all ventilation. So it's not really a sound dampened case. And I can hear the GPU fan spinning, but it's, it's nowhere near obnoxious whatsoever, especially once you have headphones on um, and you're listening to in-game sound, it's not gonna be an issue whatsoever. I should mention that the uh, GPU boost clock of 2070 has been really consistent. It hasn't been dipping, hasn't been fluctuating. It was at 2077 megahertz initially, you know, I guess it just really wants to play some cyberpunk or something. Uh, but once it hit, you know, around 6970C, it eventually dropped down just ever so slightly to 2070, but uh, very consistent speeds there. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention during the unboxing is that NVIDIA recommends a 550 watt unit for this GPU. I think the RTX 3060 Ti is 600 watts recommended. So the power, uh, the power requirements for this card aren't quite as strict. You could probably even get away with a 500 watt unit if it's, you know, 80 plus certified, preferably 80 plus gold, and uh, you know, it comes from a reputable manufacturer. But um, yeah, 550 watts there, not too hard to drive. Obviously, if you're getting an add and board partner card that has a really high you know, factory overclock on it, it may have a higher power requirement, say 600 watts or something like that. So you wanna make sure that uh, you know exactly how much power you'll need based on the model of GPU that you're getting. Now at this point, there's probably no shortage of benchmark graphs available for this GPU from a variety of different tech reviewers out there. So rather than give you more of the same information, more or less, I thought it'd be kind of fun to switch it up and just show you how this card performs in a handful of popular titles just as I'm playing them as, as a gamer. So giving you more of a real world demonstration of what this card can do, uh, both at 1080p and we're gonna look at 1440p gaming as well. Some of the flavor text that I saw earlier said that this card is poised to vanquish 1080p and 1440p gaming alike at 60 plus FPS. So let's put that claim to the test right now. Okay, the first game I'm jumping into is Call of Duty Warzone. This is a really popular game, obviously, but it's not one that you typically see in a lot of benchmark videos, just because it's kind of hard to compare since it's a battle royale game, online, multiplayer. Um, it can be kind of tricky to, to get some, some good, reliable, consistent data in a title like this. So this seems like a good candidate for a real world demo that I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about, those of you who play Warzone. So these are the settings I'm working with. We're gonna start at 1920 by 1080. We've got VSync disabled, of course. Frame rate limit is unlimited. And more or less maxed out settings. There are a couple settings here that I didn't go ultra. I just kind of left on high. But more or less, we're, we're looking at high to ultra settings. Things like shadow map resolution I kept on high as opposed to extra. Particle lighting is set to high. Ray tracing is enabled, as is ambient occlusion. So the game's gonna look really pretty at these settings. It's just a matter of whether or not the GPU can handle it or what frame rate it's gonna be capable of running these settings at. Okay, so here we are in the plane, ready to jump. And it looks like we're getting some decent frame rates here, but of course we haven't hit the ground yet. So don't wanna to speak too soon. Just gonna go ahead and uh, let's go to the lumber yard. Try not to die immediately, because it's gonna be pretty hot when I get here. But we're on the ground now, and it's looking pretty good. We're getting well over 100 FPS. I can definitely work with that. This is a 144 Hertz monitor, and we're almost getting that, actually. Yeah, frame rate's looking really good. Really, really good at 1080p. I could easily crank up the rest of those settings that I left on high as opposed to extra or ultra. 
probably without any issue, it'd still be getting really decent frame rates. Okay, I'm in the Gulag now, getting around 130 FPS. How can I lose? How can I lose at this fantastically smooth frame rate? It's just impossible. Why am I getting... Ah! Okay, I got him. I was getting pegged in the back by rocks. Okay, clearly the card can handle this game at 1080p. What about 1440? All right, we're back in the game at 1440p, and it looks like we're getting anywhere between 80 to 100 FPS, depending if we're indoor or outdoor. Let's go inside here. Definitely jumps up beyond 100 FPS when I'm indoors, at least in this little house here. Jump out, and there's a lot more stuff to render around in the environment. Um, so that kind of dips down to the mid 80s. Sorry, my phone's going off. Uh, but still, really good. Well above 60 FPS, very smooth. Um, definitely not gonna leverage something like 144 hertz monitor at this resolution, but hey, this is more than playable right now. And I just died. So this is probably a good time to switch games, but so far so good. This is a really good promising start to see roughly 100 FPS in game, whether we're talking 1080p or 1440p in Warzone with the RTX 3060. Before we continue, a special thanks to Core for sponsoring this video. Powered by the Unreal Engine, Core is a free online platform that lets anyone create and play PC games. Their free game library is already chock full of popular genres, including shooters, RPGs, simulators, and more. Many of which feature super creative and sometimes bizarre concepts, as they are made by players like you and me after all. Best of all, while you can leverage any coding or game development experience you have to create the game of your dreams, you don't necessarily need any of that with the platform's intuitive world-building tools. I started playing Corehaven Chronicles, an adventure RPG that packs some really nice visuals with an enjoyable combat system and a surprising amount of complexity. While playing, I couldn't help but think about what kind of game I would create on the Core platform. It seems like there's so much more to explore with Core, and the fact that it's free, it's seriously worth checking out. You can download Core to start playing and creating PC games for free by clicking on the link in the description below. Now back to the video. All right, now we're in Far Cry 5. And for this game, I'm gonna start off with Ultra Settings, which I think should already be set here. Yeah, everything's pretty much Ultra or as far as it can go. Anti-aliasing is on TAA, and we have V-Sync disabled as well as frame rate lock is off. 1920 by 1080, Let's see what we get. Okay, yeah, this is looking pretty familiar. Kind of the same frame rates that we were getting in Warzone. Maybe a little bit better, actually, especially when we're outside. Oh, shit. I don't want to engage. I'm trying to make a video. I don't want to. I don't want to kill people right now. Can I loot your body? What? Oh, shit. oh god, oh god. Yep, I, I should have seen that coming. All right, let's try 1440p. Okay, all right, still looking really good. This card is. This card's kind of fast. <laughs> It's kind of fast. In the uh, reviewer's guide that NVIDIA sent, they said that the RTX 3060 is roughly two times faster than the GTX 1060, which, you know, 1060 wasn't known as being a blazing fast card or anything, but 2x the performance of even that card is, is pretty impressive. Come here, bitches. Come here. Yeah. Okay, okay, Far Cry 5, clearly not a problem for this card. All right, next we're doing Apex Legends. This is another game, it's kind of like Warzone Battle Royale, very popular, that kind of, you know, often gets neglected in the benchmark graphs, just because, again, it's, it's sort of a hard game to benchmark. I'm gonna see if we get in. Yes, looks like we're jumped into a game here. Sweet. Let me double check. Oh, the client's game account has been banned. Why am I banned from playing Apex? I don't even play Apex. I've played this game maybe a total of two hours in my life. How am I banned? Okay, I may have to create a different account. What the hell's going on here? All right, let's try this again under a different account. Oh, firing range. I really gotta do a stupid tutorial here. Oh God, this is so stupid. What resolution am I even at right now? Okay, I'm at 4K. Let's let's crank that down to 1920 by 1080. We're gonna do V-Sync disabled. Uh, sure, we'll enable NVIDIA Reflex. Anisotropic 16X. I'm just gonna max out pretty much everything. Let's just do max, max, max. All right, I finished the stupid training and now we're on the ground in an actual match playing some trios. Apologies in advance to my teammates. I'm not gonna be much help. In fact, I'll probably just be a liability. But uh, you can see here we're getting really good frame rates. Once again, RTX 3060 kind of crushing it right now. Again, we're at 1080p max settings and things are looking buttery smooth. Oh, sh oh sh there's people. Hello, people. No, knocked one down. I've got you, buddy. Oh, don't come in. Don't come in right now. Nope. Just 
barely got him in time. Oh, did he get down again? Oh, okay, I thought he was down again. Okay, I'm gonna get killed right here while I'm reviving this guy again. Oh, yep, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, we were already at 2560 by 1440 this whole time. Okay, let's let's go down to 1080p then. Well, that bodes well for the card. All right, well, I'm dead, but my teammate is still alive. And you can see here we're getting 144 plus FPS. I think this game tops out at 144. That's why it kind of looks like it gets stuck there, but I think it's just hitting a, a ceiling. Um, but uh, that's, that's a good problem to have. Apex Legends, easy peasy. This card eats it for breakfast. All right, so far the 3060 has been kind of crushing everything I throw at it, so we're doing cyberpunk. We're getting serious here. I'm gonna crank the settings up here. I wanna bring this card to its knees. I wanna find the breaking point, and I think this game can do exactly that. So let's see here. Max out all the things. Looks like it's already pretty set to that. Screen space reflections quality. Psycho? Eh, we'll just leave it on ultra here. Everything else is maxed out. Boom, boom, boom. Ray trace lighting, keep that on ultra as well. Ray tracing's on it, of course. And let's give this a shot. Are we at 1920 by 1080? 1920 by 1080, there we go. Maximum FPS is off, V-Sync is off. Let's check this out. Okay, can I, can I get back here? Cool. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to crash your, crash your show. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Your bouncer dude just let me in. Horrible job, you're fired. All right, here we go. We're, we're in a chopper right now. I'm just mowing these dudes down and it looks like we're getting uh, not quite 60 FPS here. You can see that we're dipping into the 50s. This is by far the most demanding game of the four that we're testing today. It is putting the 3060 through its paces right now. All right, finally, over 60 FPS indoors, but this is just a really tight little corridor here. It definitely seems like if you want over 60 FPS consistently in this game, with the RTX 3060, you're gonna have to crank down some of the settings. Maybe crank down the quality settings, turn down ray tracing a bit, you know, put DLSS on uh, performance mode, or all the above if you wanna get, if you really wanna make the most of the frame right here. Why don't we try cranking down the settings a bit just to see what it takes to get over 60 FPS consistently. I'm gonna do ray trace lighting on medium, and we'll do DLSS performance. There we go. Maybe ultra performance, how about that? Oh wow, now we're getting much higher frame rates, well over 60, but uh, the game does not look quite as crispy as it did. I don't think DLSS needs to be on ultra performance actually. Let's just try regular performance. Okay, the game definitely looks better than it did on ultra performance, and the frame rate's a little bit lower, but still well above 60 FPS. So I think this is probably a good sweet spot here. You may occasionally still dip under 60, but not nearly as much, not nearly as frequently as, uh, as we just were. At this point, I'm a little scared to see what 1440p looks like, but let's give it a shot. Oh, no. Well, the game crashed, that's nice. I know my overclock is stable, so that wasn't it. It's just the game being cyberpunk. I'm gonna jump back in really quick just so we can see how 1440p looks, even though I'm not expecting great results here. Okay, 1440p, let's see. Pretty firmly in the 50s right now, 50 FPS. Maybe even some dips into the 40s because we're getting really close. Oh, shoot. Yep, there's, there's 41 FPS for you right there on that explosion. So yeah, if you wanted to play this game with this card at this resolution, you have to crank the settings down even further. All right, I think at this point, I think it's safe to say that the RTX 3060 is a really fast card and it can pretty much handle 1080p, 1440p gaming at well over 60 FPS in pretty much everything except the most demanding of modern AAA titles like Cyberpunk 2077, especially if it's a title that uh, supports ray tracing and you wanna crank up all the eye candy on that. You do have DLSS to help you with that in most cases, but you may have to scale that down to the performance setting or even the max performance setting if you want that 60 plus FPS experience. But overall, a very impressive card. It's just a matter of getting your hands on one and being able to find one for a not super inflated price uh, preferably not from a scalper either. I mean, the whole the whole market is just so screwed up right now that, um, you know, launches like these, it steals a lot of the thunder out of these launches. This would otherwise be a very exciting day, but the fact that maybe 5% of you will actually be able to get your hands on one of these in the next week or so, um, kind of dampens the mood a bit. But um, there you go, RTX 3060. There's what it can do. I hope you guys found this video somewhat helpful, even if, getting one of these cards is gonna be near impossible, but uh, you guys let me know what you think about the GPU and when you think 
things are gonna get back to normal in terms of GPU availability and pricing when that's gonna normalize eventually. I'm hoping by the end of this year, people who are getting into PC builds or people who wanna upgrade their systems can do so without having to fork out an arm and a leg um, or having to buy from the secondhand market, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So until next time, guys, thank you for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys in the next video.